Hello, I'm Clay. Next tutorial. This look is Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was originally requested by, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, um, Carwin C Y M R U. Yeah, I'll put your name there, so thanks for the request. Um, I decided not to go down the whole Burn route, like the 2004 film. I think it was Burn 2004 film, I can't remember, to be honest. But yeah, uh, I decided to go down to the earlier routes of Phantom of the Opera and like do a birth defect disease type look. Yeah. So this is what I came up with. <laughs> this is my inspired version. So yeah, I made it so you can hide it behind the mask if you don't like it. <laughs> but yeah, so if you want to see how to recreate this look, stay tuned. So you guys will be happy to hear that I'm not actually going to be using any prosthetics in this video, uh, at least ones that I've not made off camera. Um, I'm going to be using tissue paper and latex, that, they're going to be my main the ingredients, they're going to be my main tools here. Because usually I make gelatin, I mean I was going to sculpt the whole face piece and the mask so it fits my face exactly and stuff like that, but I thought, you know what, I think I can achieve this with latex. So I might as well do that for you guys, at least then a lot more of you out there can do this. So, I mean you don't need clay and all that jazz. So the version of the Phantom that I'm going to be doing now isn't really the one from the 2004 film with Mini Driver. It's more uh, like a collection of the looks he's had in the past, like from different theatrical productions and movies. It's it's the common factor in it is this big lip and the scarring around here and the raised cheekbone and the exposed area here, that kind of stuff. But I'm going to make it a little bit more my own. So I'm going to pull the eye down maybe and yeah, it's basically it's not going to be a burn. So it's going to be sort of like a deformity from birth, that's going to be the idea, and it's, yeah, not like it's fresh. We'll see how this goes, <laughs> okay? So for the mask, I literally bought a regular face mask from a party shop, I think it cost like a pound, something like that, so not much at all, uh, and I cut it up. So I've cut it up to match all the, different re all the different reference pictures I've got, so it stops the lip, goes around the lip, and stops about there, goes halfway down the middle of the nose, yeah. So just a really, really cheap plastic mask I've just cut up. That'll do the job. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is put this, line this up where I want it. And I'm going to take a red eyeliner pencil and draw right down along there and around my eye just so I can trace the shape. Okay, and that was done using a red eyeliner pencil, uh, a cold pencil by Grimace. Just because it's really easy, it rubs out if you make a mistake. Okay, the reason I've done that is so that I know that it's like a guideline. So within here, I can do the deformity and the makeup and everything. I don't really want it to go beyond the red line. You can do if you want. You can do some like light bruising around here if you wanted to. But I want the eye, the whole thing in here to be completely hidden by the mask. Okay, so I want it literally to be... Oh, that looks quite nice. And you take it off and it's... Ooh, dear. Okay, so this side pretty... No, this side pretty. This side roadkill. Okay, just remember that. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to block my eyebrow out, so I'll be right back when I've done that. Um, if you want to know how to do that, just check out my Edward Scissorhands tutorial. I'll put the link there, um, because I most went in-depth there on how to do it at the beginning of the video, so I don't, I shouldn't need to go through it again. Um, plus, it will just save some time up in this video, okay? <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take some liquid latex and a sponge, and I'm going to cover the entire... What am I doing? The entire of this side, sorry. Um, okay, so everything within the red lines. Just a really thin coat. You don't have to worry about your eyebrow. You can go over your eyebrow if you want. I am. Your eyebrows are perfectly safe as long as you've covered them completely in the wax. If you're a bit nervous, it does not matter. Just go around them. Uh, and also, obviously, go around your eye. Okay? Okay, so I'm just going to let that dry and do another coat. Just so I can build this up. The reason I'm doing this is just so I can get um, just a base that, that I can lay it on. So I'm using t I'm going to use tissue to make the prosthetic side of this. So if I start using just random tissue without latex, it will go rough texture to a nice smooth texture and there's going to be no way of hiding that. So it's just easier to make the whole thing that dull texture. Okay, okay. so I'm going to let that dry and do another coat. Okay, so that's the second coat of latex applied. Uh, now I'm going to take some tissue paper, just regular tissue paper that I've literally pulled into two halves and I've took the really, really thin half, cut it into tiny, tiny, tiny little strips like that and I'm just going to start layering up where I want the... Um, where I want it to be thicker, so I'm going to put it, first bit I'm going to start is on is the lip. So I'm just going to press that down, and I'm going to take this sponge and just dab some more latex over the top of that, just to hold it in place. Okay, and I'm going to layer that up exactly the same again, about three times. Okay, so that's nice and raised the area now, so I'm going to carry on doing that. I'm going to do it all along the cheekbone and up the temples, leaving a space in the middle. Um, I'm just going to cut skip ahead because I can't really show you anymore how to do that. It's just making it, it's just cutting the tissue to the right shape, sticking it down with the latex. So I'll get to that bit and I'll show you where to go from there. 
Okay, so as that's drying, I think I'm going to start the top half. So as you can see, I, I did a little more than three coats. I did about six, to be honest. So the little the shape going around here and the jawbone, okay? So there's still latex underneath, as uh, in between as well, just only really thin coat. Okay, so that's where the tissue's gone. So I'm going to continue the tissue up, and I'm going to make it so that there's a big area here that's exposing. I think it's meant to expose the skull. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so there we are. So the shape I've got, it goes around the lip. This, this area here, so it makes the jaw, not jaw bone, the cheekbone stand out. It goes up to this whole area, it looks like it's cracking. So this area here is going to be like the uh, exposed skull, that kind of thing. And that's the main common bit that I'm getting from all these pictures from different versions of Phantom of the Opera. So, um, okay, so I know it doesn't look much now, but when it's painted, hopefully it will look better. So you can see where it goes white and then like sort of clear and then you can't see the latex anymore as it tapers off to here, that's good. So you don't want a harsh line. The only harsh lines you want are here and the edges of the piece and the cracks. Okay, the rest of it you want to blend in with the skin. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that a few more seconds, just let that dry and then I can start painting it. Actually, yeah, while that's drying, I'm going to do my eye, I'm going to make it be pulled down a little tiny bit. So I'm going to use some rigid collodion and I'm going to put this underneath my eye. Be very careful doing this, you do not get it in your eyelashes, that's really important. Okay, so I'm just going to go literally underneath my eye, there. Okay, I'm just going to pull it down slightly and let that dry. I've also just put a layer of liquid latex on the top of my eyelid, of course being careful of not getting in your eyelashes, just just so that when I open it, the eyes are droopy on top and low on bottom. So I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to do one more coat on the eyelid. Okay. Okay, so whilst that's drying, I'm going to apply my foundation. So I'm going to use uh, my Crayolan TV Pan Stick in 3W because it's it's a, well, my skin tone, or quite close to my skin tone, and it's really thick. Um, and it will go on nice, it's like a really thick concealer. Just, you could use a cream concealer, anything really, but it, it's going to colour this nicely. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to apply this all over my non-deformed side of my face first, <laughs> and then I'm going to move over to this side because it should be dry by then. I'm just going to blend that in. So I'm going to apply this foundation now to the prosthetic, well, the latex bit, <laughs> using a really, really small brush because I don't want to rub this on. The more less rubbing I can do, the better, because otherwise I'm, it might start peeling up and stuff like that. So just in small areas, I'm just going to dab it into place. But that's how I'm going to colour it. It's time consuming, but it will get the job done. Okay, and then I'm just going to powder that with some Grimace translucent powder. Then just brush off the excess, and we're left with that. Okay, I know it doesn't look like much now, but when we paint it, hopefully it should look like the depth. There should be more depth there, and yeah. And so for this, I'm going to be using, I mean for the depth and everything, I'm going to be using two main things, really. My Crayola and Bruise Wheel, and a Grimace Cream Brown in uh, 1001. It's a really dark brown. That's going to be my shading, and these are going to be my bruising. Okie dokie. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to take my Grimace 1001 Dark Brown Cream and I'm going to start by going around the edge of the areas that aren't raised. Okay, so I've not gone all the way up, I've just done the parts where the shadow would be. So I'm then going to take a clean brush, but slightly damp, and I'm just going to pull that colour downwards. To create shading. Okay, so we've got some blending going on there. Just get tapering it off so it blends off into the skin. Okie dokie. Next step, I'm going to take my bruise wheel and I'm going to take ooh, the nice ready burgundy colour. It's like a blood but brownie colour. It's lovely. <laughs> and I'm going to apply that all in the areas of these hollows just next to the brown. Then I just took a clean foundation brush, I've already done this, I forgot to record, sorry, uh, a damp clean foundation brush, and I just literally mixed those colours together in the skull area, just to make it all tapered off and dirty in that, okay? And then I'm just going to do some really, really light bruising on the eye area, and I'm just going to use the purple for that, but a tiny, tiny bit, so if I just do that and get all the colour off, then I can just take the tiny bit that's left, and just run that underneath the eye because you don't want it to look fresh you just want it to look like i don't know there's not as much blood getting to that area or yeah <laughs> just cover the entire eye area with that 
and you can do exactly the same with the red again that same red really really lightly just dab that in the whole area, the whole area. I'm just using the red and the purple again just to make this eye shape a little bit lower just the bag I'm just literally colouring in this area here so first the purple and then a little bit of the red so now I'm going to work on the lips okay so I'm taking a Crayola lip palette I'm using this red here it's, well, the reason I'm using the Crayola lip palette is because it's more like a lip tint than anything else so hopefully it won't look like it's got lipstick on so we don't want that so I mean you can use you could use a lipstick as long as you brush off loads of the excess and then just use whatever's left <laughs> So I'm just going to literally apply that in a big, big shape here because he's got quite a large lip on this side. And as always, of course I'm going to use fake blood, a tiny, tiny bit because we don't want this to look fresh. just want it to look like, to look like regulated blood that's been there for a while. And I'm going to put that just at the start of wherever these exposed areas are. Okay, so we're left with that. So now I'm going to do the eyebrow, okay? So I'm going to make this eyebrow not as arched because, yeah, it needs to look more manly, I think. So I'm just going to make it a bit thicker, just nothing particularly special. I'm just going to use a MAC brown eyeshadow. So I'm just going to use a mixture of uh, a black and a brown MAC eyeshadow. I'm just use an angle brush and I'm just going to take it just straight across, getting rid of the arch. You know what's ironic? This is actually the good side of my face. You know everyone has a favourite side of their face. This is my favourite side. <laughs> I should mention at all times when doing this makeup, keep trying to line up the mask just to make sure you're not going too far out. Okay, because, I mean, obviously you can't do much better the lips. It's going to go across, but... Yeah. <laughs> okay, I just slicked my hair back. I was actually going to draw on a sideburn because he's got... Obviously it comes down to about there on him, but... I don't know, I'm, I'm really against drawing on fake hair unless it's eyebrows, to be honest, usually. Um, yeah, I don't know, I mean usually I would not a piece, I would make a piece that sticks down, but I think for now it looks okay as it is. Okay, so I'm just going to get into costume and be right back, actually I might block my beard out. Yeah, I'm going to do that too. <laughs> okay, so the costume, as well as the slicked back hair, is some black gloves, a dinner jacket, this bit's up to you, this is just what I had lying around, so it's what I'm using, is I use the white shirt, um, a cravat, and, well, yeah, basically. <laughs> so it's fairly simple, I mean, obviously you need the mask as well, or else this is, I mean, you could probably say it's a zombie. <laughs> but, yeah. So if you wanted to, you could put some spirit gum on the inside of the mask, um, and, or just put some on the, the line or your face, because it doesn't really dry, it stays tacky, so you could stick it to your face and then remove it at the end of the night just to scare people. <laughs> But yeah, so that is my Phantom of the Opera look. What do you think? <laughs> oh, it looks so weird with my hair slicked back. But anyway, yeah, sorry, going off on a tangent. Uh, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you like it, make sure to rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, yeah, you know the drill. So, <laughs> so thank you guys so, so much again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, bye!